today I'm going to unbox and take a look at Tanto Monta, The Rise of Ferdinand and Isabella, 1470 to 1516. This is from GMT Games uh, and designed by Carlos Diaz. Um, GMT Games was kind enough to send me this copy, so I want to thank them for that and excited to get into this as this is uh, kind of a prequel to Here I Stand, and of course Here I Stand led to Virgin Queen, so if you want to uh, play from 1470 all the way up through Virgin Queen, you're going to need all three of these games. Uh, now, this is, again, by Carlos Diaz, so this is a little bit different design than Here I Stand, although I think it keeps a lot of the same gameplay uh, from Here I Stand, uh, and I think the, some of the major changes is dealing with the um, combat, but also, you know, the subject matter, because this is, you know, focusing on the Iberian Peninsula or Spain and all the conflicts that uh, go along with that. So as we can see here, you get an example of the cards. This is definitely a, a card uh, play type game or card driven type game. The cards really uh, move the action forward. You have a point to point system, as you can see there. And we have uh, the Iberian Peninsula, and we also have Northern Africa. There's also this is also during the uh, time of exploration. So you're going to have. Uh, I would imagine there's going to be holding boxes or cards or something that deals with the exploration of the new world and trying to get around Africa into. Uh, India and the uh, spice trade of sorts. So let's take a look and see what it says here on the back here. This uh, this is a heavy box, thick box, heavy box. Assume there's a mounted board in here and a lot of juicy content. Um, Tanto Manta, the rise of Ferdinand and Isabella, covers the period from 1470 to 1516, the height of the Age of Discovery, making it a prequel to the award-winning Here I Stand. And also, I'll put a link to, I've covered Here I Stand before, so I'll put a link to that in the description as well. This four-player grand strategy game centers on the Iberian Peninsula, a land that has been splintered into numerous caliphates and kingdoms over the previous 700 years. Warfare, part of the desperate competition between Christian and Muslim faiths, often referred to as the Reconquista, has been one constant. Now, age 18, Isabella of Castile has been offered the marriage uh, alliances to both Portugal and France against the wishes of her brother. She refuses both deals and instead elopes to marry her original betrothed, Ferdinand II of Aragon. But can their fragile alliance between Castile and Aragon hope to prosper facing threats from all sides? So this is a for the, another thing that's a little bit different from Here I Stand and Virgin Queen for that matter is this is a four-player game. So there's going to be four factions. I imagine you're going to have the, the Ferdinand and Isabella faction, probably going to have the Portugal faction, which was... Um, you know, growing in power during this time. This might be the height of Portugal's power uh, in history. And then you also have France, uh, which was trying to move in and take over some of the territories uh, in the Iberian Peninsula as well. As far as the fourth, I imagine the fourth might be the Caliphate, the, the remaining factions that are on the Iberian Peninsula and in Northern Africa. I imagine that might be the fourth. We'll find that out when we get in here. Players familiar with Here I Stand will find much familiar in Tanto Manta. Over half the rule book remains unchanged. However, the land combat system has been enriched with, a, with the addition of uh, explicit siege artillery units and cavalry units. The spring phase is also extended to include play of headline events. Chances use powerful hand to score bonus victory points and sneak in extra event card play before the turn is fully underway. Finally, the enhanced exploration map system depicts the arrival of Vasco da Gama in India and Christopher Columbus in America. So there you have it there. Components, uh, one, uh, 22 by 34 mounted map. Yes, I knew it. 131 playing cards, four player cards, 
three supporting charts, uh, four reference charts, two-sided, four player aids, six counter sheets, one rule book, one scenario book, and 12 six-sided dice. So, and this complexity is six. You know, being this four-player, it's interesting. I, I found Here I Stand and uh, the Virgin Queen. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at the back of the box and what they had the complexity level. I found them relatively complex because, uh, not only because there's a lot going on in this game system, but the asymmetrical play uh, makes it a little bit more complex because you're, you're playing, your faction doesn't play exactly the same as everybody else's and you kind of have to learn how to, uh, you know, maximize that and figure out what your goals are and how to play your side on the board. And so the asymmetrical play, I imagine, is probably going to be similar in here as well. Um, and that adds a little bit to the complexity. Ed Beach was the designer of uh, Here I Stand, and he is the uh, series design and development here as well. So there you have it. Uh, solitaire suitability is very low. That's another reason why uh, I like Here I Stand. I like uh, Virgin Queen. Um, they're hard, you know, they're, they're best played at the, at the max player count uh, with all the different factions, uh, which makes for a long game. Uh, especially if you're teaching new players, um, and it's hard to get that that max player count to the table. So you know I have played it uh, with less than the full uh, complement, and also I've played it solitaire. You know, kind of multi hand. Uh, I think Callendale did that one time, and I kind of did it that way. It, that makes for a very long play uh, and really kind of hard. And with the card play, there there's some hidden information, and so it's really kind of hard to really uh you know have have a split personality maybe you know five six seven ways is really kind of hard i might need to go talk to my psychiatrist uh the th thing that makes this interesting again you still have the card play so it's going to be hard to play solitaire or, or multi-handed however with only four factions that's that's a you know might be easier to take that on you don't have to have as many split personalities all right so enough of all that let's get inside this box and see what it has in store for us boom 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 oh good thick box you know good typical gmt quality nice thick box here here is the rule book right off the bat right off the bat, right there. Oh, this is a thick rule book. Look at that. It is 64 pages. You have a victory record sheet here on the back. Wow. And then it is uh, glossaries. No, this is not glossary. This is uh, this is all about victory. So I mean, we're going up to 63 pages. So this is going to be a read folks uh dual column typical gmt format looks like it is full color uh we've got your table of contents that goes 22 sections 63 pages as i mentioned uh here are the different factions let's take a look at that see what we got going on here so you're going to have castile aragon france portugal the tranjos uh, Participity of Catalonia. So there's several different factions here, but those are probably not the main factions. I imagine there's four player cards. So it'd be interesting to see how these al uh, ally to each other. Get the palpable C again. Interesting. So again, I mean, there is um, a lot going on in this game. I mean, you've got you know military, political. Um, religious, at least in, in, uh, here I stand, that was, a and, and to some, to a certain extent, uh, uh, Virgin Queen, uh, was, a, a big part of it. I, and we have conflicting, uh, religions here as well. So it'd be interesting to see how that, uh, plays out. Triangular marker, I don't recall that. You have square, triangular, and hex, uh, hexagonal markers as control markers. It's been a while since I cracked one of those other ones open. Um, here's player, players, powers, and rulers. So you have a Muslim player, a Portugal player, a Spain player, and a French player. Okay, so that is the, how they're going to break out between 
Muslim, Portugal, Spain, and France, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's not a lot of games that cover Portugal um, or its, uh, you know, kind of its expanse. I remember the old Avalon Hill game, which might have been a reprint from a, another publisher, but uh, Conquistadors, where you played Spain, France, um, Portugal, and United Kingdom, maybe... Uh, Maybe the Netherlands as well, but I mean that was one that you that was one of the few games I remember early on that allowed you to play Portugal as a player at at a strategic level. So you got the powers. Here's the major powers, limited major powers, minor powers. Then we got the rulers. Here's the player cards, an example of that, and we'll get to that when we crack further into the box here. So if you're familiar with uh, Here I Stand and Virgin Queen, then this is probably going to be an easy pickup for you. As they said in the back of the box, half the rule book is the same. Uh, they made some tweaks to some of the card play into the, the uh, land combat, uh, which that shouldn't be that hard to pick up. And then, of course, you know you have a different map and different units and different powers, but... Uh, the rules generally, the core rules should generally be the same. Here's military units. You got leaders, uh, Naos. Well, that's the crews. Land units. Oh, here's yeah, uh, army leaders, naval leaders. Here's land units, naval units. Wow, cool. Cards and resources. Here's all the different card types. You have home cards, mandatory event cards, response cards, combat cards, no event cards, normal event cards, popple bull cards, a lot of cards. Here's resources. Here's sequence of play. You can have a card draw phase, diplomacy phase, but not on turn one, spring phase, action phase, winter phase, marriage resolution phase. For children of Catholic monarchs and victory determination. So there you go, seven phases. Here's explaining the card draw phase. Here's the diplomatic phase. Quite a few pages on that. Again, very political type game. I'll probably put this in my political playlist as well if you're keeping track of all my different playlists. Uh, here's the spring phase. Here's action phase, control and arrest, movement. And again, this is a point-to-point -point system. Got like two pages, a little two and a half pages of movement. Field battle, really not too much on field battles. It's really a page, it looks like there in total. Siege, several pages of siege. Of course, this is a strategic level game, and we're talking about... Um, you know, the, the Middle Ages, uh, moving into, uh, getting into gunpowder, uh, time at some point. Actually, we're going up to 50, yeah, we're, we're definitely into gunpowder time period. And, um, so siege is important at this point. Naval affairs, a lot of pages on that. So, a lot of rules on naval as I'm looking through here. Of course, there's exploration, so that's going to be a big part. I really am excited to get open this map and see what that looks like and how they uh, portray that. Here's construction, how you build land units and regular units and probably your naval units and naos and fortresses, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, so I apologize. Then you get to the winter phase. Looks like there's some events going on there. And uh, a lot of tracks in here as well. Royal Weddings, Major Powers. Here's some example of play here. Wow. Here's Portugal. So is this some special rules for the different powers? Yeah, it looks like there's some special rules for the, special, for the different powers there. Aragon, Foreign War Cards. Here's rules on minors and independence. Looks like we got a decision tree there. And there you have it. Now we're then we're gonna get to victory, which is three pages of, vic of rules on victory. There you have it. Wow. I am uh, exhausted just getting through that. But it's worth it all, folks. It is. This is a good, solid system. Here's the scenario book. 
so we've got uh, scenarios. We have a 1470 scenario that's seven turns, a 1490 scenario that's four turns. So you can play a little bit quicker gameplay. Uh, then you have an example of play that looks like that's about seven pages. Designer notes, game as a history, notable battles, characters in Tanto Manta, and credits. That this is awesome. This is history. I love. That's why I play these games is for the history. And so uh, this is all that. This is basically it has an example of play. So how to play the game it has your scenarios and how to play the game, or example of how to play the game, and then of course the history behind that all. So there's all your setup. Uh, for the different scenarios, any kind of special rules, and then we get right into an example of play here. And relatively detailed, it looks like. I mean, it doesn't go through the whole game. It looks like it only goes through maybe a round, but it, it covers a lot, some of the highlights of the different phases. Here's some designer notes and some tactics. Here's explaining some of the cards, it looks like here. And then game is a history. I really do want to re read this. This is going to be cool. So anyway, so nice historical game book here uh, with other stuff going on. Here is a player aid. It is thick player aid type material. Diplomatic influence table. Here is a French player aid, which is dual sided. So you have the sequence of play on one side, but then you have all your French based type information, card draw, uh, VP, special VP, bonus VP. Then you have your Muslim player aid. Again, with the se sequence of play on the back. And you get your Portuguese player aid. Again, and then your Spanish player aid. So those are their four factions or four uh, elements or countries you're playing. Here's the royal wedding table. Diplomatic status, and that's one uh, single-sided, so you put that on the board next to the map. This could possibly be a table hog. Uh, here I stand was kind of that way, with especially with all the different player cards, the map, and everything going on there. It, it takes up quite a bit of table space. With only four factions, maybe this doesn't take up as much. Here's your table sheets one, table sheets two. So these are key tables that you're probably going to need to refer to during the game and you've got uh two of those oh you got four of those so that's awesome so uh for each one of the different players so they can have their own tables to refer to during the game that's cool then we've got the player card this is france single-sided because this is going to be off to the side of the board all your different actions that you can take um, keep track of your different fortresses, your dungeon, oh, warehouse, that's for your supplies or resources. Wow, look at that. All kinds of different holding boxes there. Very interesting. Then we got your Muslim card. And I imagine they might, it looks like they have some different actions. Again, this is asymmetrical. So this one has Consolidate Powers of the Crown on France. This one doesn't have that. Looks like this has everything on here except for that. So that's something unique to France. Portugal looks like it's similar to the Muslim card there. Again, this is just a quick glance, so don't, uh, don't take my word for it. Then Spain has uh, Promote Marriage Bonds. It has a little bit different uh, actions as well. All righty, then we get into the counters. They say there was like six sheets of counters. One, two, three, four, five, six. Man, this is amazing looking. All right, here are your counters. Good, thick uh, quality. Looks like that's what, there's that gray core there. Nice looking counters, and they are double-sided and come out relatively easy. Look at that, that one just about popped out right there. Alrighty. These look like these might be some of the Muslim counters. And again, they're all double-sided. You have some naval units here. More counters.
and more counters. God, there's a lot of counters in here. Uh, good thick box. The, probably if you want to put this in a tray, uh, it probably might take more than one tray, of course. Don't know if that's all going to fit in the box, especially not with the inserts. Probably have to get rid of the insert. These are a little bit smaller counters here. Uh, a lot of color on that. It'd be interesting to see how they were laying that out. That'd been at the printer. So, good, good example. Of this looks like there's some pirates here. Good example of the counters. Then we have the board, which is mounted. We'll get to that. Dice. Look at these nice, thick, and colorful dice. A little bit different color. A little bit muted on the colors, but cool nonetheless. A, ba uh, a bag of baggies. Need that. Probably nothing in these uh, areas here. But you always got to check. Sometimes I've, I have found stuff before. Usually not in GMT games. And there's the decks of cards. All righty. So let's put that off to the side. Let's take a look at the map. Then we'll take a look at the cards. So this is going to be a ooh, pair of pants fold there, as you can see. And I'm probably going to have to go up Periscope. This is a long map here. And uh, I'm going to have to show it not the way... God intended it. Let's see here. Let's go up a little bit because it is a long map and I'd have to go side to side to see what this looks like here. So I mean, that will lay down eventually a little bit of puffery at the beginning here, but not bad. Uh, we've got all kinds of tracks and up here and let's go and look at it from this side here. Yeah, maybe I can do it from this side. There you go. Yeah, what was I thinking? All right. So a lot of your activity is going to be here on the Iberian Peninsula, but you also have Northern Africa. And then we've got some inset maps here, the Canary Islands. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. This is uh, South America and Hispaniola and Cuba. Cuba. And here's Africa, the southern part of Africa. And then here is over all the way into Asia, into Indonesia and the like here. So that's cool. So you've got uh, the entire Mediterranean, well, like from Italy over, you have the Mediterranean in Northern Africa. Don't really get over to Egypt or anything like that. But then again, don't think any of these factions uh, messed around over there too much. Uh, but then you've got the New World uh, and then... Uh, well, Canary Islands in, in the Atlantic, they have the New World and um, Africa and into Asia. So that's kind of cool how they had how they did that map there. So again, a lot of naval uh, going on in this. So we have a victory point track over here. We have returning units turn track there. Looks like we have a key up there. There is Paris. All righty. So there you have it. Nice looking map. Uh, and then, of course, we have the uh, Popplecy or Pepplecy right there. There's Pope Paul II. He's got his own little spot there. Very nice. Uh, liking the look of uh, the map. Uh, you know, and it kind of goes with the dice. As I said, the dice were a little bit different muted color. Uh, not, you know, super bright or flamboyant. And I kind of like that. Uh, so these are the card decks we have in here. Again, this is very much lives and dies on the card play. Very important. I mean, there are actions that you pick, but card play is very important in this game. And good quality GMT cards. A little stiff, uh, but not you know not too thick uh, that you can't you know use them, and not too thin that they're gonna you know be a problem. So get some of the cards here. And a lot of text on these cards. Uh, you've got like the um, you know numerical value, and then you then of course you have a lot of text that plays out what you need on it. These are mandatory. So these I think these are events maybe. All the card backs are uh, look like the same here. Here's some combat cards. There you get into some gunpowder right there. Response, no event. So there's some of those cards. Let's see what these look like here. 
and sorry for this going on kind of long, but this is, you know, a little bit of a talking about the system in general, but also, you know, there's a lot in this box here. And so th this is the thing I really like about this system is not only is it a very unique and asymmetrical type gameplay, but also you learn a lot of history. I mean, there, uh, these events here are tied to history. Um, you know, th like this right here gives you, uh, this is a general card here, but I mean, th it's going to be tying into the history of the, of the, uh, of the time. Now I don't see a lot of, uh, history. Sometimes there's like text on here. This is a lot of, uh, just explaining the card. So a lot of reading on here and quite, you know, the text can be a little bit small. So if you're, Getting up there like I am with your with your eyesight, then uh, this might be a little bit of uh, a little bit of an endeavor here. Now it's not the text isn't too bad, but I mean there's a lot of it, and some of these cards there's quite a bit on it on there. But you still get the characters of the of the time and the history of the time. You just doesn't, doesn't look like you. There's a lot of history on the cards there. That's okay. I mean you, you got the rules. It, this is a game, right? But uh, there is the history book, and you also have the the t dates and titles and stuff like that uh, of the cards kind of tie back into history. So there you have it. That is what you get in a box of uh, Tento Manta. A uh, lot of stuff in here. And it's kind of hard to even lay it all out here of all the different things you get. Um, so if you are interested in this time period... Uh, then by all means, this is probably something you want to pick up. If you're uh, like the uh, Here I Stand and Virgin Queen system, then again, by all means, probably something you want to pick up. Um, and there you have it. Uh, this is not for the faint of heart, though. This looks, you know, th that complexity on the back uh, looks like it might be a, a good indicator of what you're looking at in this game uh, as far as you know playing time and complexity although it is only four factions which is a little bit different than what we've seen in the other games which might make this actually a little bit more approachable we'll see anyway that's what i have for you today thanks you for stopping by thank you for gm thank you gmt games uh and i am excited to get this read. I got some reading to do. There's 63 pages plus uh, the scenario book. Anyway, thanks all for stopping by and take care. Thanks for watching!